tell us how did you get the call to go and play with Black Sabbath? Well, I, I was I, I, I've been friends with Tony, uh, really close friends with Tony. It's since about nineteen oh, sixty nine, something like that, um, when Black Sabbath were just starting when they were Earth. In fact, yeah. before, even before the big, I knew Tony then. Um, we we just got on really well, uh, and I, I had no. I, Black Sabbath are very different from any any other band, and I had. It's amazing how incredibly huge they are to this day. Still, they just took out. They invented a, a genre of music, and Tony, in particular, Tony's guitar riffs are just incredible. Um. And I've known, I've kept in touch with Tony all through the years. Um, I'm hoping to record with him this year. He's launching like a new um, a fragrance. There's a fragrance, perfume fragrance that he's, he has out at the moment, I own me, which is lovely. And now he's launching a second one. Uh, and he played me some, again, some amazing new riffs. So uh, we do, we're going to do a video to launch. Hopefully, we'll launch this, this new fragrance. He was best man at my wedding <clears throat> about fifteen months ago. So we've, we've all been great mates. So, but they back back to uh, back to nineteen eighty three. They made an album called uh, Born Again, and Bill Ward, the original drummer, was on the album, and it, and but Ian Gillan was the lead singer. Uh, everyone, and uh, everyone knew well from when I toured with Deep Purple. Uh, and for, although Bill plays great on the album, that when they started rehearsing for the tour, he just he just couldn't do it. I don't, uh, uh, whether, uh, whether, it, whether it was physically or mentally, a bit of a mystery. But in the end, they they realised that he was not capable of doing what is a very tough. The Black Sabbath said is. Hard work, it really is tough. Uh, and Tony, um, pretty short notice, asked me, so Bill can't do it. Will you do the tour? And I thought, kind of listen to the album, listen, listen to it, and then and, it, and then I, I, he said, Well, and listen to all that. He had, um, he played me the Ronnie Dio the live double album. He said, This is we do lots of these songs on, on, on the set as well. And Ian Gillen, Ian Gillen was learning all this new, new stuff too. So I remember going on holiday to Menorca and playing this album nonstop, and um, just to learn the songs. I got home and um, we had our first rehearsal, and I was really nervous about doing it. So in, in terms of, uh, obviously, you've come from ELO and you mentioned earlier that for, for the records for ELO, you kind of kept them simple because of all the layers of sound and everything involved. So what was it like getting to play with Black Sabbath then? Because they're a whole different world, isn't it, with, with the heavy drumming and everything that's involved with, with touring with a band like that? It, well, it, it, was like, it, was, it was like going back to my move days in a way where I was given total freedom. You know, just, hey, you just play what, whatever you want. As the more fills, the better. You can really show off, you know. And I, and I used to have this on this tour. If you can, if, if anybody checks out any of the old videos from it, and there's a load, there are a lot uh, going round. Um, the drum riser was amazing. It was about ten foot high, and it was the I don't know about two hundred, three hundred car spotlights in it, which used to come on from time to time. Totally blind the audience, uh, and I was at the top of the top of this, uh, and it was my first experience of being in a heavy metal band. Really, although although some of what we do in the move was was like that, but to play to a, a, a mainly male crowd as well, uh, Black Sabbath crowd is probably eighty percent men, and um, so that was different experience for me but there were such great guys to work with and I knew Tony's Tony is such a good friend uh, but Geezer Butler is a lovely man Ian Gillen fabulous what, what a what a lead vocalist yeah. uh, and a guy called Jeff Nichols on keyboard so you never actually saw he was sort of tucked away in the wings because he, he wasn't cool 
for a, a heavy metal band to have a keyboard player. But uh, he, but he was but he was there, and and uh, great guys in the crew. So yeah, I did two American tours, um, big European tour, uh, including topping the bill at the Reading Festival. And what do you remember of of that that night then? Because you you headlined the iconic Reading Festival. It was a Saturday night as well. It was a big bill. So, well, what was your memories of, of that day and that show? Well, we were lucky. It was a it was a lovely day. Um, about I don't know forty or fifty thousand people out there. We weren't sure. It was the only British day we did, and and we had, you know, uh, we we've been all over Europe, uh, and had did great business wherever we went. Uh, and we thought, I think originally we were going to do like a, a, a British tour, but instead we we were off the the, the festival and thought let's, let's do it all in one day, and then and recorded it as well, which made it another another. It went it went along with Born Again as a double album available. It's a double double album, uh, and just a fabulous day. 